-hmm. Okay, so uh, we, we just did the uh, seahorse, and we said that the, the eye is the thalamus, under the eye is hypothalamus, the mouth of the seahorse is the optic chasm, this part going uh, up here, this will be the olfactory pulp, which is the olfactory nerve, nerve number one, cranial nerve number one. This is the optic, which is two. And um, we said that the chest, abdomen, and pelvis, the chest, which is whole, this part, this is called the midbrain, pons is the abdomen, and the pelvis is the medulla. Um, back here, you can see a gland here that's called the pineal gland. This gland here is called the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is a gland that secretes melatonin, melatonin, and it's, it should be down here. Uh, the other thing is, if you look at this one, we said that in the spinal cord, the gray is inside and the white is outside. In the, in the brain, this was in the spinal cord, I'm sorry, but in the spinal cord, the gray is inside like this. The gray is inside and the white is outside. But if you look at the brain, it will be the opposite. The white is inside and the gray is, uh, the, the white is inside and the gray is outside. Here it is. You can see the white matter inside. And this is the gray. They gave it another color, but, but, but in reality, this should be white. And this, the darker color here, which is the outer part, which is the cortex, this will be the gray matter. Pause. This is uh, the next model. Um, inside of the brain, um, it contains spaces or cavities inside, and these cavities are filled with the cerebrospinal fluid, which is going to circulate inside the brain to, to bring the oxygen and nutrients to the brain and also act as a cushion to support the brain. So this was extracted from the inside of the brain, and here is what we see. This, this one here, this is called the lateral ventricle. And this is also called a lateral ventricle. So you have two lateral ventricles, right? The whole structure of this. Lateral ventricle, and this is another lateral ventricle. And then this one here will be the third ventricle. And this one, last one here will be the fourth ventricle. They used to call it um, uh, uh, first ventricle, second ventricle, third ventricle, fourth. But they said, no, forget about one and two. We're going to call it right lateral and left lateral. So th those two here are the lateral ventricles. The third is here, and this is the fourth. These are the four ventricles. Lateral, another lateral, that is two. This one here, this is the third, and this one here will be the fourth ventricle. Okay. Um, this is a septum that separates, we're talking about the ventricle. This is the septum that's separating the two lateral ventricles. So if you push here, you're going to enter to the left lateral ventricle. We don't see it unless you open this. So in this side, at the right lateral, if you push this and go down, you're entering the left lateral ventricle. Um, now we said this is the thalamus, which is the eye. This is the mouth, which is optic chasm, and between those two, the hypothalamus. If you go under the eye, but to the back, this part here will be the third ventricle. So the third ventricle, if you put the other part like this, will be at this area here. This is part of it. And then you have, this is called the aqueduct of the midbrain. It's an aqui. Aqui means fluid or water. Uh, duct means a duct. So this is a duct that conduct, uh, conduct, with, uh, conduct between the third and the fourth ventricle. Third, fourth, and aqueduct is a conduction. And again, the fourth ventricle is between the cerebellum in the back and as you see here, this is the midbrain. This is the pons. So it's between the cerebellum, midbrain, and pons. This is the fourth ventricle. Third, fourth, and the lateral is in here. We, we, we can't access this at this time. But this is the, uh, the septum that separate um, right and left lateral ventricles. These are the four ventricles. Okay. Okay. This is another larger model that's showing the ventricles. This is this huge one here. This is the right lateral. This is the left lateral. And this one here, this will be the third ventricle, and this is the fourth ventricle. And as you see, these are interconnected. There is a connection between the two laterals and the third. This is called the interventricular foramen. This one here is the third, and this is the fourth, and there is a duct connecting to those two that's called the aqueduct, aqueduct of the midbrain. Okay. Both the brain and the spinal cord are covered by layers. These layers are three layers. If you're going from inside to the outside, it's called the 
pad, P-A-D, like the spinal cord pad, the pad that's covering the spinal cord. P is pia, A is arachnoid, D is dura, P-A-D. And if you forgot pad from inside, outside, pia means delicate or soft, and you know that the tissue of the spinal cord is a jelly-like. So pia, which is kind or soft, will be the innermost. Diura, which is the outermost, diura is coming from durable. So durable is the part that's, that's going to be exposed to the bone, and this has to be tough, durable. So pia, which is kind, this will be the innermost. Diura, which is durable, which will be the outermost, that's exposed to the bone. And the arachnoid means the network that's going to be in between. So if you look at this structure down here, um, this is part of the spinal cord. This is the body of the spinal cord, transverse processes, spinous processes, and there is a canal inside through which the spinal cord will go. This is the spinal cord, this is the gray matter, looks gray here, and this will be the white matter. So the spinal cord is surrounded by three layers, P, A, D, Pia, Arachnoid, and Dura. These are the three layers, from inside to the outside, Pia, Arachnoid, Dura. Pia is a delicate because of the jelly substance of the jelly-like substance of the spinal cord. Dura is durable, it's exposed to the bone, which is hard, durable, so P-A-D. And these over here, uh, these are the spinal nerves with the two roots. From each segment, there will come a spinal cord, so all these are the spinal cords, and it has two roots, as you see here. This is the dorsal root, this is the ventral root, and this is called the dorsal root ganglia, and then it's going to branch. So the spinal cord have roots, Stem branches. Okay, pause. All right, this is a model of the reflex arc. And the reflex arc is like when you touch something and you move away, the, it, it, it goes through this circuit down here. So if you're touching something here, this is part of the skin, these are the receptors here. The receptors will pick up the signal. The signal will go from the receptors to the spinal cord through the afferent with A, accessing afferent, accessing, or sensory. So the, the yellow here is the afferent that's bringing the sensation to the spinal cord. In the spinal cord, the, 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 there will be an interneuron, and this interneuron is what's going to tell your brain what's happening so you'll be aware of, of the problem that's happening. So receptor, afferent, or sensory, which is the yellow, and you're entering the spinal cord, giving the signal to the interneuron, and the interneuron will pass it to the efferent, which is extinct. Exit, efferent, E, E, accessing afferent. So the orange here is the one that's going to exit. So it's the efferent, and this is also called the motor. And this is going to go out, the orange, and it's going to go to the muscle, which is called the effector. So receptor, afferent or sensory, spinal cord, which is the center, efferent or motor, and effector, which is a muscle, and the interneuron is this green in between. Just wait a second, let me see what exactly you need to know. Just... Okay, this is a model that's showing the neuron, which is the nerve cell, and this main part here, the blue part here, the whole thing here, this is the body of the neuron. Um, these parts here, like this, not this, this one here, this is called, and this one down here, which is an actual extension. It's an extension, it's continuous with the body, and this is called the dendritis. The dendritis is what's going to bring the signal to the body. This is something else. This is the uh, synaptic knobs from another neuron. So differentiate between those two. This is larger, and it looks like extension. This is something looks like stuck on it. It's separated. So this is not the dendrites. This is the dendrites. See, it is extending from the body. So body, dendritis, this will be the nucleus. And this is the start of the axon. The axon is the whole thing here. And this axon is myelinated. This is the natural color of the axon, which is gray. This is the myelin sheath. Here is myelin sheath and myelin sheath. It's not continuous. There, is, there are interruptions, and you can actually see an interruption. You can see the blue here, which is the axon. So it's like part is covered, and this interruption here is not covered. This is a myelin sheath, and the interruption here is called the node, the node of Ranvier. Ranvier is a scientist, a French scientist, who discovered the interruption here, so they call it the node of Ranvier. So this is, the, and there should be several ones, like 
here and, and, and it's all the way like one here and one here and one here. So the node of Ranvier, but this is the, the complete one here, node of Ranvier, which is the interruption between each segment of the myelin. The cells that make the myelin secreted and surround and give the, the, the neuron or the ax on the white color is called the Schwann cells. And here are the Schwann cells. These are the cells that secrete the myelin sheath which is this one here. So um, this is called the Schwann cells that secrete the myelin in the peripheral nervous system only. And the, and the uh, central nervous system is called the oligodendrocytes. But here, this is called the Schwann cells. Okay.